Welcome to iHeartGeek. And welcome to another episode of iHeartGeek, the uh, triathlon. Positive edition. Triumvirate. Triumvirate? Wow. That's that that, that, the word of the day. That is the word yep. of the day. I, I like trilogy. Tri- triumvirate? Is that what you said? Triumvirate. Yep. means a, a group of three. Wow. wow. I, you know, I try to spell that for the um, definition of the show today, but I'm not going to. <laughs> So today we are brought to you by being good. Brought to oh you yeah, by Kosh. feeling good. Yeah, I like can't do that Kosh. as well. No one can <laughs> no, do it as no good as Kaj can. Kosh. Right, exactly. So I apologize. We have had a few weeks off, but yeah, we you have know, to do it. <laughs> you know, yeah. you know. Finished, I think you know. everyone that's Stuff alive today knows. Happen. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's a screenshot right there. That's outstanding. Yeah, I so liked, uh, that. That'll be the who, thumbnail for everything. <laughs> who was it on the page? Was it Tyler Roman? Who, yes, who it was. Put, uh, who put Chappelle? Got him on that podcast. Episodes. <laughs> this one is just for you, Tyler. <laughs> just for you, Tyler, buddy. Yep. No, I, and, and I got to be honest. We, pr- if it wouldn't have been for that, I might have gone another week. But I'm like, oh, I can't. We can't go another week without this. Not for Tyler, man. He clearly not. Up. Huh? He's always I good. Know, he set us up, yeah. He did. So and so just a quick on what's going on. We are doing our episode today on being positive and finding things that make us happy. Um, mm-hmm. And we are trying to make each other happy right now. Like, Jason, mm-hmm. you look good. So do you. Oh, you thanks. You, yeah, everybody- look, you, look, you look big on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> big, yeah, buff and, yeah. And, I uh, really hope that y'all are watching this on YouTube. Green. Otherwise, But yes, you have, this will be on both. It'll be on YouTube and it will be on um, your normal pod. Remember, thing. I'm prettier when you can't see me. <laughs> oh, stop it. Here, hold on. Fishing. Nope. Yeah, you're nope. fishing. You're fishing. Nope. So, if nope. I was fishing, I would have put more makeup on and did my hair. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Dub and I'm your producer for this I Heart Geek show. And I'm not the writer today, but we are, yeah. Um. I'm so glad to be back. Yes, that's that's Jason down there. That's, but I'm going to introduce him last because I always do. And to, <laughs> on your YouTube screen, to my direct, what is that left? Yeah, that's left. I don't know. We have Miss Courtney. On the right, little to me. How are you, and what do you do? I'm Miss Geeky Page, and I'm the Instagram girl. And I haven't been doing that all that much lately. So sorry, Instagrammers. I'll get back on the the ball with that. And I post on our Facebook page. You do that quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Okay. And to the bottom of the screen down here, we have Mr. PB and Jason. Saving the best for last, of course. Which I'm is, glad you know, that you're positive. That works. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, uh, what do I do? I eat. I eat way more than I should. And I take care of my family and... My wife has gone back to work, so she's happy about that. Um, oh, awesome. So, yeah, she's very happy about that. So she gets to es- escape my children. <laughs> no, my children are wonderful uh, almost, <laughs> almost all the time. Uh, but, yeah, the, you know, this has been – and you, Dub, can relate to them. And even Courtney with her nieces can relate to um, this being the longest summer in the history of summers up to this I point. I don't so, know. Yeah. I haven't seen the nieces in oh, three months. Oh, that's right. Uh, I'm sorry. That's okay, right. You're bringing it down. You're well, bringing... no, it, actually, no, 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 that's no, not true. Mean, that's not true. I haven't physically seen them, but we do, um, sometimes we have lunch together because they'll call me on Hangouts. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, or they'll call me on Hangouts and I'll read them a book. That's awesome. Yeah, so I do get to see them. Yeah, Very good. I get you. That's good. Okay, uh, and um, you'll notice that... Um, show normally regular i guess mr blyze is not here um if you haven't heard yet he had a baby well his wife had a baby but he she was had a baby he helped he helped he helped in the he, part he, of it he contributed yeah. <laughs> um yeah he's uh he's new he's new daddy time so yep. that's completely understandable and ben, benjamin i did get to see him and oh my gosh i'm in love with that child um yeah. oh nice he's I saw adorable pictures. saw pictures he's so cute yes 
Yeah, he moved um, in. We social distanced, but he came to my kids drive through graduation, so and I got to so I got to meet Benjamin. And nice. Got to hold him, but but I yeah no I fell in okay. love with the kid instantly. He's awesome. Well, you know, when we all go back out in the world in six years, you can pick him up and hold him then. I don't know if I'll be able to lift <laughs> him. Under, under the arms six. and just, you know, think, think about, I'm Uncle Dub and, you know, the whole thing. That'd like, be great. I see you on the internet. So that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to actually talk to Tara because I really am going to send baby Yoda toys for Christmas. I, I can give I'm, you their address. It's, it's going to happen because... <laughs> Oh, I, I love I love Blyze, but he absolutely deserves that. So yeah, well, absolutely. He's got to be listening, so I can't say what I'm doing. But there is a surprise that is in the mail, and if I do not see Benjamin wearing this, I just I, I will not be happy. You know, so yeah, ah. ah, so I got to give give him the first geek anti gift. The first thing I gave the niece, the first niece when she was born, was a Wonder Woman onesie. <laughs> nice. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got we got to do our propaganda, you know. Yeah, right. to, yeah you know. Absolutely. Well, well, speaking of propaganda, if you guys are bored and doing your internet shopping, go to our uh, Redbubble, and that way you can get some of our cool stuff, which no one has on today. Because yeah, we need to do more internet shopping. I think, but yeah, go go check out Redbubble. Check out the iHeart Geeks store. There we have a billion, zillion, trillion different things that you can get with the iHeartGeek logo with Hal on it. And um, yeah. You honestly, honestly think about this. You, you, you want to take a shower with Hal looking at your naked wet body while you do it. You absolutely want that. I'm pretty sure I don't. I'm good. I, I, <laughs> and I'm I, a member of the iHeartGeek panel. <laughs> <laughs> I love Hal, and I don't want, want to do okay, that. Okay. <laughs> you want to drink your you want to you want to drink your beverage out of Hal things. You want yes. to wear Hal clothing. You want to have yeah. Hal wallets and stuff like that. Absolutely. So and, and yeah, have yeah. him watch you in the shower. No, okay. Yeah, no, awesome. no, we're not doing that. <laughs> but you can check out the link for Redbubble. It is in the show notes for YouTube, and it is in the show notes for whatever your podcatcher is, because I'm pretty careful about putting that in all the time. So awesome. we are going to be talking about things to make us happy. And what things make us happy right now is we can call it for the geek world escapism. Uh, yes. It's, it's, that's, a, that's kind of what we all need to spend at least an hour of our day doing. Get off the um, any news site, get off anything and just kind of escape. Um, recently I have fallen back in love with my comiXology app and I have just been immersing myself like I never have in my life in some of these books that so many things, ones. so many classic things to, to find yeah. there. Absolutely. And e even the current stuff, but it's, it, I, I guess, you know, you can talk all you want about, you know, the joy of comics and I have nothing of, of the regular book, I like this just because I have 8,000 comics at my disposal. I have a bunch in the, um, you can see over there, I have a bunch of comics in the paper form as well. And that's, I'm not talking about the medium. I'm just talking about being able to lose myself in comics. I mean, I, my, my comics are, my comics are that way. Just they're, they're out there in boxes. The so, comics yeah, are out mean. there. But yep. no, I, this has been a weird time in my life. This is, I've gone deeper into comics than I've ever gone in my life because it is, I have truly made it a hundred percent escape. Um, nobody talks to me when, when I'm doing it. I'm just zoned out and I'm in the story and it feels really good. I mean, I say, you know, I love comics before, but this is, I starting to love comics again, which is really That's nice. Good. What kind of escapism are you guys doing? Um, uh, Courtney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what sort of escapism are you doing? I'm watching the Simpsons. Literally right now? No, not right now. Yeah. <laughs> but later. Very good. Later. Because all the seasons are on Disney Plus now. Mm -hmm. And so when the whole lockdown thing started, I said I need something kind of fun and light to enjoy. So I've just been watching episodes of The Simpsons. Um, sometimes I fall asleep to it. So I don't know if I've seen every episode because I'm pretty sure sometimes I fall asleep to a couple episodes and I miss them. <laughs> Fair enough. But you know, it's like uh, I finish my work day because I'm working from home and I'm like, all right, let's go do something stupid because the worst thing that could ever happen in a Simpsons episode is Homer loses his job and then he just gets it back, by the, back. <laughs> the back of the end of the episode. <laughs> so. 
Well, it's yeah. truly the, that kind of amazing um, sitcom-ish escape because there are no consequences. Uh -uh. Bart never gets a year older. Um, uh -uh. You know, he, he might have failed a grade, but it doesn't matter because next week he's in the same grade. Um, yeah, and I mean, it's, it's he, he really meets Milhouse, and Milhouse is still his friend next week, and Milhouse is still Milhouse. Yeah, yes. And and uh, I hadn't seen a bunch of the research because I'd stopped watching it a long time ago, a long, long time ago. So most of these episodes I haven't seen. Mm -hmm. So it's some of them are still, it, it's really still very funny. Oh, yeah, some of absolutely. Them are, some of them are bad. But some of them are still really very funny for a show that's been on like thirty something years. Yeah. But even the bad ones, are, you can still there's still something funny. It. Yeah, yeah, there's still something funny in it. Like though, it could be a terrible episode, but there might be a line that's in there that just cracks me up. So that's my my escape tool right now. Okay, Jay, what about you, Jason? Um, so. Dang a definite return to very late night um, video game playing, um, especially like the role playing type games. Like started with Breath of the Wild on the mm -hmm. Switch, which I I played all the way through. I started that before all the lockdowns and then continued through the lockdowns. And recently, I returned to um, the Elder Scrolls, the Skyrim game, um, playing it till obscenely stupid times of the morning like three or four in the morning which is really stupid but um yeah it's totally um a way to i mean talk about ultimate escapism you're escaping into the the life of this video game character mm -hmm. and the adventures that they have to do um i absolutely look forward to it because you know my kids when they go to bed and when my wife goes to bed because she goes to bed earlier than me having to work um that's when it's Skyrim time, you know, and uh, I'm almost done with that game now too. So I'm starting to worry. It's like, oh my god, what what's what's next? Fables. And I mean, I'm, I'm thinking. I know about Fables, and that's possible. one, two, and three. Oh, so good. Yeah, Fables is possible. So is um, actually the Witcher game, The Wild Hunt. Supposedly that's I haven't really, haven't played it. Yeah, supposedly it's really cool. Although it's got boobies in it, so I would have to guard my uh, my young children from boobies but supposedly yeah supposedly that's a really great game um yeah so we'll see okay so here's here's my question since we're we're all indulging in escapism and it's it's very blatant and obvious what we're doing we're escaping from the world how do you self-govern and know when is enough is enough or is there an, an enough is enough um I, I, I have no idea i'm playing till four in the morning so i have i have no idea if i am a good judge of Enough is enough at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I would say, obviously, okay, so I, I'm not going to sound judgy when I say this, but, like, if you don't shirk your responsibilities. But, yeah. <laughs> right, but. Right. No, no, don't shirk your responsibilities. If you're going to mm -hmm. do escapism, do it when the important stuff that you need to be present and, you know, focused on is, is done, obviously. That, that, that would really be my only, you, you know, if you're, right, if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to do it and you're not going to have it go into the realm of too much, then just make sure you're doing it when you don't need to be mm -hmm. there and present and involved in what your kids are doing or your job or, you know, whatever. whatever yeah. Yeah. Or what do you think? Um, I don't know. Cause I think I'm a little guilty of being a little too overindulgent with it because I know that I'll catch myself going, Oh, I've watched a whole lot of TV today and I probably shouldn't have done that. And then I just watch more. Um, more TV, yeah. <laughs> watch more TV. We're all but, guilty of that now. Yeah. And I mean, but, but what I, what I do is like, I don't watch TV until the, the work day is completed. Mm -hmm. um, Cause as I said earlier, I work from home. So I work, I'm working a full shift um, from my home. So I work from seven to five every day. And at one at noon, is my lunch hour. So instead of sitting down to watch TV, Chaplin and I will go outside in the backyard. Sit in your um, hammock? So I sit in the hammock. Yep. <clears throat> Me and the dog, we left the hammock. Um, me too. And then... <laughs> you look so happy about yeah, it. I saw a picture I, of the hammock. Yeah. It looked comfortable. Man, it's I super like comfy. It. Yeah. It's super comfy. He likes to... He'll jump on my stomach because he likes I'm to actually, sit in it too. I'm impressed, that you can, I'm impressed that you can end that in an hour. 
Because for me, I'd be like hammock. Right. It's uh, great. That that is the hard done. part. Is mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, the hard part is going back to work. Exactly. <laughs> it's what I do, but um, because you know I'm getting paid, so there's that kind of plus important. side. Unless yeah, there's can't that afford a hammock side. no more. Right. So you have to hawk uh, your hammock. We don't want that. Yep. So I do that, and then at the end of the day we'll go outside for a little bit more just to get some fresh air and then I'll come back in and then I'll turn on the TV. Yeah. Some days I don't though. Some days I'll read a book or I'll clean the house, but there are Which, some by days. The way, Mother nature, enough of this crappy wind. Okay. Cause we want to go <laughs> I like outside. It cause it, yeah, I'll take it the keeps wind. it cool enough. Yeah. It keeps it cool enough. You can go outside. I'm outside most good, of the day. I love a good breeze as much as anybody, but if it's whipping around your chairs and, Throwing around your, you know, that's, it's a little bit too much yeah. actually. But on the other hand, I can be very happy with that wind. I like it. It's calming to me. It's relaxing. I don't oh, mind good. it. You just got to like, yeah. take the positive out, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, I gotcha. So what I, what I find myself doing is whenever I find some, myself obsessing over so something so much that that's all I'm thinking about, that's when I, I have to give myself a schedule on it. I'm like, okay, well I have, an hour or two hours and that's it no that's matter fun. what that's not fun no i'm kidding it is it. No, well, just, it that. keeps it keeps me from from escaping so far in that world that i'm not of any normal good um right that makes sense of course you know and if they kid i think that helps you being a more well-rounded person and i think that you know when all this ends and everyone goes back to their normal life people are gonna have a little trouble going back into that normal world because you're used to doing what you want when you want Oh, definitely. Yeah. But this is, I'm, like, I'm already seeing a little of that, you know, with, yeah. with my wife going back to work in her work routine, you know, it's like, I got to get up earlier than I did before. And, you know, and staying up mm-hmm. till, till ridiculous hours is really not something I should still be doing, but yeah, I'm having difficulty transitioning out of that. So I get that completely. Yeah. And, and it's super positive with us starting to, I guess, interact again it's really nice to go among people that you don't always agree with on the internet. We always tend to basically flock to people that agree with us hundred percent on everything. So it's really nice to go among people that you, that, that you don't agree with. And then you're like, Oh, you're still a good person. Oh, we can't hug yet, but yeah, I miss that. But that's, that's one of those. Yeah. I miss hugging. Yeah. Hugging. That'll make me happy. I can I can appreciate that yeah yeah you know, but I mean, it it's not it, it puts we've forgotten real quick humanity for others so um yeah. but that's just that this is that's I'm actually reaching that into a positive is it is it's going to be so nice to you know just forget about all the other stuff and just be friends with people again and even if you're not friends just being among people that whether agree or don't agree you don't always have to know <laughs> right that, exactly. I, yeah, that's something that we're kind of missing in our positivity. Because- yeah, the, dyna- the dynamics of people. Yeah, I definitely understand. I mean, even though I am not what anyone would call a social butterfly at all, but I definitely miss... None of us are. <laughs> yeah, I, de- I definitely miss the dynamics of people in your presence, you know. Um, yeah. Beyond the... Beyond the uh, obviously, your fam- you're, you're with your family. You're with your family. Yeah. Sure. Um, but yeah, the the friends that I haven't seen or just that, that random encounter, you know, that, uh, that you get when you can go people watch or when you're yeah. in a group or things like that. Yeah. That's, that's definitely something to look forward to. Um, and it is starting. So that's, that's a yeah. good thing. So going back to what we were originally talking about a little bit, what were we talking about? What? Positivity. And escapism. Oh yeah. No, with escapism, what do you feel when you get escape, I mean, what, what kind of, what, what, I don't know if what chemical reaction you have in your brain, I'm not asking that deep of a question, but what, what is it you feel when you escape? Is, mm. it a, is it a good experience? Happy experience? Is it, I mean, it's gotta be good enough that we keep doing it. Interesting. Let me think about that for a second. <sighs> um, so for me, it's, it feels like you're falling. If mm-hmm. that makes any sense. Um, so say you're watching Lord of the Rings. 
Okay. We're not watching that for anything other than the sheer beauty and the escapism of the story. You feel like you're falling into that world. And mm. when you get all the way in, it's nothing else around you peripherally, whether you're reading the book or watching the movie, it, you become part of whatever it is that you're using to escape. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what I mean by falling. It's not the best way to describe it, I guess, but it's, you know, it's like an all encompassing, you're able to set aside whatever troubles and tribulations you've got in your life for however long you're doing this thing, whether it be a two hour movie or reading a book for an hour. If the, (laughs) if whatever you're using can do that, then you've hit it right on the head. Let, let me piggy bank, piggyback on that a little bit. No, um, piggyback on it. I, I can use a little extra change. Couldn't we all? Um, <laughs> when we said that falling, actually, that it really brought an image to my mind. Of, there's a Beatles song called Falling, which mm-hmm. is just, it's a great, I don't know, like two minute song and it's fantastic. And it's just, it's very Beatles of that era. You know, it's kind of floaty. But you, you, you listen to that song, you close your eyes. And you can feel yourself just kind of falling through the air, like, you know, like um, a leave in the wind or something. And that is kind of, you know, emotionally, that's what I feel like the escapism does. And I want mm-hmm. to piggyback on what you're saying with the falling. And I recommend listening to that song, kind of see what that does. It's you feel like you're floating through the air in the wind and you don't have any control and you don't care because you're just free. You well, know, I still want to piggy bank. Okay, piggy bank on it then. No. Okay, so um, thinking like the imagery that Courtney brought up with the falling and then you're expanding on the falling gave me a a symbolism, a symbolism that I can now articulate, which is for me. Okay. So in the, in the world that we're in, I'm, I am doing things as a dad. Um, I was moved to cut to kind of just recently start a semi-political blog. So I am immersing myself a little bit more into the real of what's going on in order to offer my, my perceptions on my blog. And actually that does make me feel good because I feel like I'm doing something Im- important to maybe, you know, we'll see how important it actually ends up being, but it's very much grounded in reality. So when, when the escapism uh, things come into play for me, it's honestly like shutting a door. It's like shutting a door on all that responsibility because if my kids are in bed asleep, other than just having to be present if they wake up, I can shut the door on that. If my wife is asleep, I can shut the door on that. I can shut the door on my blog, shut the door on the news, shut the door on anything that's going on in the world mm-hmm. and just shut that door. And that is a really good feeling to be able to, I mean, I like moments of isolation anyway. Yeah. So being able to symbolically shut that door and isolate myself in the activity, you know, which is Skyrim in this case, um, nothing else matters at that point because that door is shut and I don't have to open it until the next day or whatever. Fair enough. So it's, it's about learning to compartmentalize basically is what you're saying. Yeah. That makes, that's one, another way to put it. So, sure. Now, you know, kind of going on with the next point we're going to talk about, but that is really, you know, when the, when, when our parents always, we always grew up and our parents said, you know, keep your head out of the clouds, blah, 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 you know, pay attention. I think that is important to learn how to do that. And it's also important to learn how to open the door whenever we want to get our head back Mm -hmm. in the clouds and and just learning when. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that's really the lesson that our parents wanted to tell us without knowing that they were telling us that. Does that make sense? Yes, and also don't smack your little brother. Oh well, that that, another, I learned a lot of that one. He'll be bigger than you one day. And you'll be sorry. That oh happens. yeah, my yeah, my little brother is, you know, two inches. No, taller that's what than I always. Me. That's what <laughs> I always got told. Yeah. At one point in time, he'll bigger than he'll be bigger than you. That's when you turn around and really become their friend and start. When just, you realize that real quick. Just, just hand them your lunch money. Don't even like Here's wait the for thing them is, to demand it. Just give it. To it's them. different when you're the sister, because yeah. when you're the girl. They grow up and they protect you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I, got, I don't have I, to I have hand him my lunch and money. I get it. <laughs> right. I'm the big sister, but he'll end anybody who messes with me. Right. 
yeah, my daughter, who is five years older than my boys, uh, my boys will one day be her protectors, I have no doubt. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I get it. I wow, what is Hello. that? Hello. I don't know. Oh. All right. Interesting. Well, like- <laughs> Forgot to put the phone on silent. More apologies, everybody. <laughs> well, I, I wrote something on Facebook a couple weeks ago that I think really is um, kind of important to this conversation. And it's, it's don't let your passion overwrite your reason and your logic. That has to do with escapism and everything else. If you escape as much as you can, um, you know, go do these things that make us happy. Go watch Never Ending Story and smile and be happy. Watch that scene from um, A Christmas Story when he's opening up the Red Rider and the, that dad smile that just, I, I've you talked about that at trial. nauseum. It is honestly one of the most beautiful scenes ever written to me. Oh, totally. That escapism, it's important, but you also can't let that escapism affect your reason and your logic and your life. No, it's and everything like we've talked before is just balance. You know, this is you know Danielson. Um, it's just having balance. Yeah, and I think I think that I, you know, and I want to say, how do we learn that balance? You know, we've already said we're all terrible at it. <laughs> but where do you find the balance? Because I, I mean, we all know when we're going too far one way or the other. How do you know? Okay, so uh, ter- terrible at it maybe right now because things are so weird but um mm-hmm. i think in general we we learned you know we learned in our however many x decades you know that um you, i mean i i would ask you guys don't you tend to doesn't that guilt creep in when you know you've been not present for too long you like you know it it's like okay it's time to get back into the presence i mean it's like just there you know Someone. even if even if you can um, curb it a little more in modern, in our modern situation, um, the fact just that 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 you that you feel that pull, like Courtney was talking about with this, with with you know that pull to go back to work, the pull to get off the hammock, the pull to you know yeah. um, become present again. I think is, you know, it's obviously something you learn. And if you've learned it correctly, then it's inherently there. Yeah. You know, did any of that make sense? I have it no did. idea, but it did. Okay. Well, uh, here, here's another kind of point to that. Do you have friends or are you that friend that can go, no. go no, to someone no friends. that can go to someone <laughs> and say, I think you're going a little too far overboard. And I mean, is that okay for people to do if they're close enough friends? Oh, absolutely. Do you have friends to do that? Do you do that to oh, any yes. of your friends? Yes. How, and how, how do you how do you how do you um, approach that? Because that's that's a difficult. Okay, life. that did. I, I I'm, I'm if if I'm stepping over Courtney, who has something to say, I will actually shut up unless I, I can. Think you're just, good. Okay, just want the the quick point on that that you just said. Um, you establish with your longtime friends, the relationship. And Mm -hmm. from friend to friend to friend, it could be a little different. Maybe you will be a little more forthcoming with someone that you know will process the information better than maybe someone who wouldn't. And so you kind of of, um, judge how forthcoming you're going to be. And I certainly do that. There's, there are, there are some friends I have that I believe I could be, absolutely 100% honest with and it wouldn't affect the friendship even if the honesty was negative and then there's some other friends that I would probably you know filter that a little bit and maybe not present it in such a a, a blunt instrument type way Mm -hmm. Um, so yes certainly that range of friends probably exists in everybody maybe what about you, Courtney? Do you got anybody that could say that to you or that you would feel comfortable saying that to? Or do you think that's none of your business? Because that's what's going on in your own mind. I'm trying to think if I've ever been in that situation before. And I don't think I've ever had that kind of situation where I thought somebody was going too far in their mm-hmm. obsession with something. Um, but knowing me, like maybe if it was my best friend, but she's, she would tell me off too. So that's our, where we would be with yeah. that. Um, I don't know. I think I'd probably just sit back and 
let you work it out yourself. If I thought it was going to be dangerous to your health or to your finances, whatever it is you're obsessing about, yeah, then I might say something. But if it's harmless and like if you're watching 27 episodes of The Simpsons in one night, cares? yeah, right, I'm not going to say anything. Right. <laughs> but like if you're spending money on designer handbags and you don't have money for that, then yeah, I might mm-hmm. think that you need to check right. finance it. But I don't well, know. You know, I, I kind of draw the line on that is more the topic of what they'd be obsessing over. Um, you know, I have some yeah. friends that are definitely will obsess over very, very dark things. Um, and it starts affecting their personality. And at that point, anybody that I consider friend slash family will hear it from me. Yeah. Um, you know, we need, to, we need to take a step back. Let's go do something else. You know, and that's, and that, to me, that's the difference between being a friend and being an acquaintance. Sure. Um, but you, I, that, that to me is where they draw the line is when, you know, they step on that, you know, dark side, you know, and I've hit it too. And, you know, the, the, it comes with the depression or anger or whatever else. And just being able to step over and having those friends that can do that can sometimes be the difference between, you know, life and death or even just changing the, the, uh, the moving of your world, you know, right. the, yeah. if you see them building that lightsaber and that Kyber crystal that goes in there ends up being red <laughs> and absolutely you need to step in. That's fair enough. And I know, I know you're joking, I know you're joking, but there is some truth to that. You oh, know? Yeah. No, yeah, like there's yeah. someone in my life who I think obsesses about collectibles a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. And it's and it's not that I'm not going to say who it is because that's nobody's business. Yeah, right. And I'm sure this person might listen to podcasts. So I don't want him to go. Why did you do that? You outed me. You outed me. But right. um, and it's not even a case of of collectibles in the terms of okay, well, this is a mint condition Millennium Falcon in the box kind of a deal. Mm-hmm. It's just random stuff that you find, and it's like. Maybe you need to rethink that. But I have I said anything to him? No, because it's his business. Yeah. I mean, it's just I personally think it's a little too much. But I wouldn't be like, you can't do that anymore. Because it's Carl, isn't it? It's Carl. No, it is Carl. I <laughs> well, but I don't think that you know. It's not so much telling people you can't do that. I think it is. Uh, well, let's look at what let's look at what's going on now. And you know, I'm an outside perspective, and we're friends. And I care about you. Let's 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 look at this from the outside and see what's going on. And you you tell me what's going on with this. Right. I, I think so that's much. The, I think that's the way to handle things. And I would say, I say, you know, I'm not a licensed psychologist or whatever, but I made that up. But you know you did. I, that was an awesome word. Whatever you just said, it was psychologist. Awesome <laughs> psychologist. Yes, yeah, psychologist. I'm not nice. licensed in psychology. Right. However, this is. I think this is an important way of looking at things. And I think that, you know, we do mental health checkups and I think right. that, you know, our geek friends that are friends, not just people that we know online, but our friends, I think it is time to be able to say that to each other now and then. Yeah. Well, obsessions are tricky because yeah. they could so easily be something that, you know, could lead to bad things. So yes. Um, whenever somebody that I care about, is showing obsessive qualities, mm-hmm. even if what they're obsessing on at that moment might be harmless, like 27 episodes of the Simpsons in it's when it hits night. 28. That's when we have, when problem. it hits 28. I mean, yeah. Right. We need to talk. When you could clear an entire season in one day. Right. right. Uh, no, but anytime, that. <laughs> anytime okay. obsessive, anytime you see obsessive behavior, your, your little light should go on. And even if at that moment you don't, address it you know because it might peter out and, and end up being harmless but yeah that light goes on if i see someone i care about starting to be obsessive and i would hope that if someone sees that in me that their light would go on as well for sure you know and going back to the topic of the show when you, if you do something like this make sure it's positive and you know it's not you're doing this wrong like it's but it's a you positive stink, thing stink man <laughs> no i'm good <laughs> I think I'm funny. Okay, let me ask. Let me ask this question. You know, we kind of looked at the negative side of our obsession. I could have. I could have gone all day without watching you sniff your armpit. Just <laughs> you I just want you to know that. Yeah. But you didn't. But I didn't. Right. Exactly. But, 
But let's look at the other side of escapism and when it turns into something not just beautiful, but something important. Um, I was looking for the name earlier and I can't find it, but I know that um, whoever it was that discovered the concept of the double helix DNA strand, um, that was just a, something they were just thinking about. It just, they, they thought about a beautiful thing and it just kept going and going and going. And I guess after six months and some illegal substances, um, it became, <laughs> I don't want to go too much into that, but that was an obsession that turned into something that with the way that the world looks at things differently. So I mean, you can't throw away these positive head in the clouds things because it is important. Oh yeah. You, you can't, how do we find that? I mean, no, none of us are probably going to discover the double helix DNA, but we're going to. I did. There's five <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> but there's other things we want to look at that we can obsess about a little bit and think about in, with these just times of escape that can be, you know, important, not just escapism. And how do you, and this is a, this is a question that no one's, we didn't write down, but how do you kind of learn, I didn't, Almost how to monetize your obsessions. And I'm not talking money. I'm talking about making it something that's important. Or even, mm. even if it's just to you or to the people around you. I mean, and I think that's kind of when we're obsessing over stuff too long, it's a good idea to start thinking, okay, well, how can we, how can I, how can I, it's not a we, it's an I, kind of twist this a little bit. What else can we do with this instead of just thinking about this one line? I think that that expands your mind as well. But I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Um, <laughs> well, when I initially constructed the script, that sounds like sort of the um, expansion of the idea of the, the great things that, um, oh, shut up, my dog. Okay. No, the, um, how all of the innovation that has come Strictly from imagination. Imagination. You know? Yeah. And, um, with me and, and so, so yeah, I can see what you're saying. I mean, obviously it's, it's tough because all, so many of the genius ideas that s historically spawned from imagination had to go through one hell of a fight for people to, mm -hmm be convinced that these actually were genius ideas that would, you know, be beneficial to mankind and so on. And so many of them get laughed away and, you know, called heresy. <laughs> I mean, all the, all the crazy things through history. Um, gosh, I wish I, I wish I actually knew how to break through. I mean, mm. maybe it's, maybe it's charisma in some ways, like how charismatically, you present that idea or maybe it's otherwise you became become tesla instead of uh, einstein or instead of uh, edison edison yeah or, or maybe <laughs> sure. it's maybe it's maybe it's deter maybe it's you know bullheaded determination no matter how many times you get laughed down stick to your guns you know but we're um, geeks we should be used to this <clears throat> right exactly uh, maybe, maybe it's a combination of, of both and, and things I'm not even mentioning. Uh, it's tricky. Courtney, you got any insight on this? Well, look at what Felicia Day did. Or, mm -hmm. or she, she had, she wasn't getting a bunch of jobs, a bunch of acting jobs. Mm -hmm. Um, she turned her, I don't want to say obsession, but she turned her passion of playing World of Warcraft with her, with other people. Yeah, into the guild, which mm -hmm. launched her into super super geek, geek stardom. stardom. So, take something you love and see if you can make something from it. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you could say this with any of the people that we always seem to really respect, uh, Kevin Smith. Um, everything is just this is what I do with my friends, and this is what I think about. Here, it's on paper. Enjoy. Um, that's mm -hmm. you know, and going back to the tesla edison thing from what i've ever read everything that tesla came up with and before edison stole it it was one of his daydreams and that's how he mm. came up with everything it's like how can i make this work and then he, he just started to obsess about it obsess about it and made it work but unfortunately he had no charisma so i think mm -hmm. that might have something to do with the jason on what you're saying with yeah and, you know well, another gonna... example would be steve jobs i mean steve jobs 
you know, smart guy, absolutely. But the innovative things that Steve Jobs okay. allegedly <laughs> took, took credit for, <laughs> you know, were not necessarily accurate. And he had Wozniak and, and people like that that were the innovators, but he was the one with the charisma. Yeah. You know, so, yeah, I see what you're saying in that regard. With yeah. Edison and Tesla, yeah. So do you think it was enough – for these guys, you know, and I'm not saying yes, they a lot of them didn't get the notoriety they wanted, but do you think they were okay with the, seeing their daydream brought to life, even if they didn't get, quote-unquote, all the credit? Well, if, if there is an afterlife, Tesla's probably looking down going, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> is it hot, I'm Edison? all right now. <laughs> you know. But, um, yeah, thanks, Elon, you know, that, I don't yeah. know. Um, I don't know. That one's kind of tricky. I, I don't know. Say yeah. that question again, because I forgot what you said. <laughs> well, okay, let, let me actually simplify it. If okay. you came up with something that you wanted to see, and it got brought to the world, but your name wasn't attached, are you still happy because your obsession came to life? Depends. It kind of depends. I think um, – uh, I have a real I broke Jason. <laughs> I, no, I it have a real Jason. problem with stealing intellectual property. I really do. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that those who are the creators deserve the credit. Um, if you sell those creative rights to someone else, then you are don't really have Superman any. Again? <laughs> How, about what? Are we talking Superman again? Sorry. No, 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 no. I mean, but yeah, that's a good, that's a good, that actually is a good example. I mean, if you sell away the creative rights or, or sort of like the, the prototype rights and then you sell it's them and you. someone develops it, then yes, it's totally on you. Um, but no, I absolutely despise the um, appropriation of intellectual property. Absolutely, 100%. Okay. Courtney, you have a last word on this before we switch to our next segment? Yeah, I want to talk about neon lights real fast because this actually happened there's a guy who did not invent the neon light mm -hmm. but he patented it and mm. he called it claude neon because his name is claude his last name is claude um and he sued anybody else who used it it's the same thing with with edison for the longest time when films came out he sued anyone who tried to make a film. That's why Hollywood was set up in California in the first place, mm -hmm. because he couldn't sue people past the Mason-Dixon line. Huh. So they could, oh. they could make films outside of the New York, New Jersey area. So it was a situation where it was not something that was created by somebody else. It was created by someone else, but someone else took credit and patented it and then used it to keep going. If I'm the person who created filaments or if i'm the person who created neon lighting i'm the kind of person that would be you go ahead and use it as you see fit but when it's somebody taking credit for your discovery and your work that is yeah. absolutely the worst thing that you can do so no i would say in the terms of stuff with like edison the tesla it had every right to be upset mm -hmm. you said the neon light the inventor of neon lights last name was claude claude that you said yeah was his first name Dirt? No, I'm sorry. I just had to ask. Uh -huh. no. wah, wah. That was way funny in your head, wasn't it? That, that, that was like a dub <laughs> joke right there. I just want to say that. It was pretty funny That's a in joke my head. that it, I would have done. It was pretty funny in my head, actually. <laughs> and yeah. I would have still been laughing if I said it. <laughs> you probably would have. <laughs> okay, and let's move on to our main event. Now it's time for the main event. Okay, for today's main event, we are doing a top three because we're short on time. At least we are as far as my counter goes. It may be different from when I edit this, but yeah, <laughs> I, we, we try very hard to keep to kind of a, a tighter um, time frame just so we're not wasting everybody's time. And it makes us so that we have to get to our point and shut up. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's by design, y'all. Okay, so for today's top three, we are talking our top three geek things that give us powerful good 
feelings. Not uh, good. Good feelings. Yeah, that that's copyright cause. So yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Yeah, be, don't, just stole don't try to Edison it. Property. Don't Edison it. Stop being an Edison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this show went truly geek with this truly conversation. Truly geekish. <laughs> Okay, so for my no, I would never steal Kaj's. I would never not credit Kaj for a feeling. We good. always do. We always do credit him. So I guess that's okay. Yep. Yep. So for my number three is um, the the thing, the geek thing that makes me happy and is the ultimate escapism and makes yeah makes everything better is recording in all forms. That could be recording music. It could be podcast. It could be YouTube. The I mean, I've, I've become overly obsessed with it, but that is truly catching that good product and making things even better than when they started mm-hmm. brings me more joy than you can possibly imagine. It, it makes the whole world. Okay. If that makes sense, you know, that's, and, and I guess that would go back to our conversation about, you know, how do you take your obsessions and make them, um, you know, into something tangible more important. And this honestly has gotten me a job just because I've gotten so obsessed with all this stuff. So it's, it's helped a lot. Cool. Okay, so let's go with Courtney. Your number, I I can't remember the word you said. Tri- triumvirate. Triumvirate. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it means a grouping of three. Um, so for my number three, I'm gonna go with sticking my feet in the ocean. That's mm. nice. I Cold like the warm? sound, huh? Cold or warm? Doesn't- um, well, not too cold. We're not like I don't want to stick my feet in the Arctic Ocean, but <laughs> I'd like to keep my toes. <laughs> um, but it's just a combination of of the water and the sound of it and the sands and you know if you're in Hawaii it's the sun so it's like all those different factors it's not just sticking feet in the ocean it's just I've never, being, I've never been to Hawaii I look, forward being to there. Day, I look forward to one day going there I Absolutely. wish I could live there but I can't afford it that's the so. worst sunburn of my life in Hawaii when I was in the Navy you're nice. pretty. You're pretty pale. I could see that happen. Oh, it was so bad. We we rented a jeep and pulled the the, the deal off. I went without shirts because that's when I was still in the military. You still forgot in shape. sunscreen, didn't you? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what we call you? Stupid. We call people. Well, we call you. We call you French fries. Okay. And, and that's literally how people who live there can point out tourists. They're red. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can do the same thing in Vegas, honestly. True. True. Yeah, that's true. That that and got, the people got who drunk, passed shorts. out, and fell asleep. <laughs> well, then there's the people who wear shorts in the winter. We're like, you must be from back east. <laughs> mm-hmm. Stop wearing socks with those sandals. That's ugly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jason, you're number three, sir. All right. So I'm going to take my number five, and I'm going to make it my number for three in this particular shoe and i'm going to go with um this is also for carl by the way um i'm going to go with my love of pro wrestling but especially pro wrestling from the territory days which i grew up with watching the um you know i didn't really watch much wwf or wcw until i got older Mm -hmm. but in the early days it was the awa it was world class championship wrestling. It was UWF, yeah, uh, mid south, that stuff. Um, I just loved that stuff growing up, and you know, with the beautiful thing that is YouTube, you can yeah. go back and you can find almost any match you want if you want to um, find a specific match that you remember, or you know, just pull up UWF and then see all the things that I may have missed the first time around. So yeah, yeah, I totally. There's a, there's a, it's an escapism. There's a good feeling that comes from watching pro wrestling that you only really understand if you're a pro wrestling fan, you yeah. know, and it's like, it's very, well, I mean, it can be applied to different, maybe you feel that way when you watch mixed martial arts or boxing or whatever, yeah. but similar kind of thing. Nice. Yeah. I, I had the, um, the WWE network for a month when it was free mm-hmm. and they actually have a lot of the old territories on there, but I got, yeah, they own it all. Yeah. I, I got <laughs> overly into the old ECW TV show and I'm like, Oh, these are oh, yeah. so much fun. Yeah. I, I, I get it. I totally get it. Yep. Okay. So my number two is going to be dragons in all forms. I love dragons. <laughs> I like watching them in movies. I like what reading about them in books. I like them when they're in comic books. I like, 
dragon art. I don't know why. I just, there's something about the whole dragon thing that just. There's something about dragons. <laughs> well, it, just, it keeps me. I mean, talk about the ultimate escapism. I can't watch this stuff without just being sucked in completely. They're all over Skyrim, by the way. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, and you can also there's also the there's a uh, cheat on there that you can make the that one dragon um, do sound like um, Macho Man. Samuel oh, Jackson. Yeah, no, the exactly. Macho I've, Man. I've seen the Macho Man one, but like <laughs> like for instance, the um, I think it was the last or the second to last Harry Potter when they had the white dragon flying around. Mm -hmm. that took me so far into the moment I had tears in my eyes. It was just, I, I, I wish it's something that I could explain, but it's just something that, I mean, I don't have a dragon art all over the place. Cause I just, that's not my thing, but there's just something about when it's done right, how just completely into it that I am. Nice. It makes me happy. Yeah. Dragons are cool. Courtney. I'm going to go with playing with my nieces and playing superheroes with my nieces. How do you play superheroes? Um, nice. Well, we haven't, we haven't transitioned into say, well, Carmen does like to play as bad girl, but she doesn't quite, she doesn't know anything about her. She just has a bad girl doll. Mm -hmm. um, but usually they're like Paw Patrol or they're <laughs> PJ Masks and I'm the villain and I always have to be the villain. Of course. Because that's so, how you roll. Right. And so we run around the house. They'll chase me around the house or they'll chase me around the backyard and we'll just just have a grand old giggle fest. And, <laughs> you know, because like the whole, the whole point of doing this is that villain Aunt Coco grabs them and tickles them. So that's, yeah. the, that's the important <laughs> that's very the villainous important part we have to get to. Part, yes, exactly. And, and after, we're done, after we're done recording, since you brought it back, girl, we need to discuss this. That woman? Batwoman, yeah. This makes me happy. Anyway, Jason, go ahead. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I read some stuff. We'll talk about it. Oh, we'll I'm talk. going to okay. I'm going to take my number four and I'm going to make number four my number two in it this. Sounds like you ordered particular in the wrong order. Show. <laughs> no, just there 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 was there's it kind of relates to what I knew some of your choices were gonna be and I didn't want to cross. Fair enough. Streams. I didn't want to cross the streams because crossing no, cross the streams, the streams. is bad. Um, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Okay, so don't cross the streams. There might be. There might be. In fact, my number two relates to this. Actually, Ghostbusters. Um, there might be differing opinion on this, but I think that the hardest movie style to make is comedies, mm -hmm. because where you have you there, there's. There's an there's an actual physical thing that has to happen for your comedy to be successful, and that is people have to laugh. And like in you know, if you if you air your comedy to a test audience and you have a silent theater, that's bad, you know, yeah. and all that effort, you know. So and because comedy has such a wide range of the people with their comedic tastes, you know, some people go for the lower denominators, some people go for yeah, exactly. I wasn't going to say anything, but... Uh, I will always laugh at a fart joke. I don't care. Right. Some people go for fart jokes, dub. Some people... No, I'm kidding. I admit it. Right. <laughs> Some people um, prefer intellectual comedy. Some people like a blend of all things. Some people like comedies that are merged into other genres, like, you know, MASH, the TV show. My, my all-time favorite show was a, was a comedy, but also a drama. Mm -hmm. um, it was a dramedy. Dramedy, exactly, which just sounds like a, a sort of a mythical animal, but that's okay. Um, yeah, so or a camel. So, yeah, drama, dramedary. Is that what those are called? Mm -hmm. Drama, something like that. Yeah. Um, so when when comedy succeeds, um, it's absolutely wonderful, and it makes me feel probably better than watching any other type of movie. I mean, even like the Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. I love watching that stuff. I love watching sci-fi fantasy dragons, all that stuff. But when comedy succeeds, that's probably the most powerful good feeling I can get out of a movie when it happens or a TV show or a stand up or whatever. Fair enough. Good explanation. Can't even add to it. I could. Oh, but I won't. <laughs> my number. <laughs> so my number one. Um, I don't know if this is selfish or not. Honestly, it is, but it isn't. But my one of my 
favorite joys in the geek world is recommending something that I love to somebody else and then they fall in love with it. Yeah, that's selfish. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's not. It's it, not might, it might be a little bit, but I love watching someone enjoy what I enjoy. Sure. And, especially, and, you know, and you feel like you have some ownership over it if you know, you're the one that introduced them. But there's just something about giving those recommendations to somebody and then they check it out and just like, oh my gosh. Um, you know, that's mm-hmm. happened with Doctor Who a few times with me. That's happened with um, some of the comics that I read. It had it, some of the music stuff that I do. I, there's just something about that joy of watching someone love what you love. And it, it's almost like a reflection on you because, wow, someone feels this strongly about something that I feel this strongly about. Actually, I completely agree with you because, and I'm also sort of like cautious when I do that because it's a really bad feeling when you don't get feedback Mm -hmm. or when you, or when they give you kind of a meh. I mean, negative feedback can lead to a discussion, which might be kind of cool, but when you get a meh, like, eh, okay, whatever. That just, yeah. I, that's why I'm very cautious about recommendations. So I give you credit for having the courage to, do that as much as you do. And well, we do this on a show every yeah. week. So. <laughs> I know we do. I know we do. But, um, I mean, on a personal one-to-one yeah. type level. I mean. And it's, it's, it's also cool that you know someone well enough to know that they would like this thing that you like. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. It's just a kind of, it's a happy feeling for me. Courtney? Going to Disneyland. <laughs> I'm going to Disneyland. Do, do, or any do, Disney do. park. Disney World is pretty great too. I've never Let's been. Just, I've always wanted to. It's my happy place. It's it in, in, next an, month, in an alternate in an alternate universe where 2020 isn't 2020. I would be just back from Disneyland because yeah, my my trip uh, you know didn't happen this year, but it's gonna happen next year. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, there's always next year, guys. Yep. Cool enough. Which is your favorite uh, Disney feature? The one thing that brings you you have a smile every time you go through it. And mine will surprise you, but let me hear yours first on that. The Tiki Room. In the oh, nice. TV. That's fair enough because you like the Dole Whips. Well, it's just uh, – here's my Tiki Room story. I never – I'd never gone in the Tiki Room. Um, and it was only in the last – because I go with my best friend. We go – we try to go like once a year. And uh, it was only in the last couple of years. She's like, let's do the Tiki Room. I love the Tiki Room. I'm like, I've never been in the Tiki Room. And she goes – and I, I'm like, I don't want to go in. It's stupid. I don't want to go. So we go in there and I spent the entire time like this. <laughs> and for those of you who are listening to this, it's me with my mouth hanging open, a smile and my eyes really wide because it was so like the word enchanting is in the title. It literally is enchanting. Like those birds start singing and it's the greatest thing ever. And then at Disney World, my favorite thing at Disney World is Expedition Everest, which is a... Oh, neat. It's probably the coolest ride. <laughs> nice. I remember that I did do the Tiki Room when I was a kid. Um, the rain just always blew my mind. Yeah. I can't wait blew. until the nieces are old enough when we go to Disneyland. I'm going to park them right in the center and go, look up at the birdies! And just, yeah. it's going to be the best. No, my, my Disneyland thing that I love, and I'll give it to you after this, Jason, and then you can take over to your next... Your, your oh, sure. but mine my thing that i love at disneyland it always brings a smile to my face because i remember my parent my dad taking me to this and just how happy and excited he got was the um lincoln uh oh yeah yeah the, the, with the animatronic lincoln? yes yep. that i don't know to me it just it makes me feel like an american when we watch that but i have it, to tell you i was horrified by the hall of president oh <laughs> it's not as cool as the lincoln one at disneyland because we did oh, the that, Hall of Presidents in, yeah, that's in what, that's what Lincoln. Yeah. Lincoln, yeah. Lincoln. I've never been to Disney World. Yeah. The, the Disney World one is literally it's each president. Okay. I don't think I like that as much. Uh, yeah. I mean, because the thing is, is, some of the animatronics don't look anything like the president they're supposed to be. Well, I tell you what, it sounds just like Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Thank you, Edison. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jason, what yeah. was, what, what just, was then? before before I do the oh the Disneyland one yeah. for me was Tomorrowland. I, I just as a kid, um yeah, all the lands were great and are, still are great, but there's just something about walking into Tomorrowland that is like, oh my God, this is just the coolest thing I have ever seen. And 
even as an adult where you can kind of see through the the illusion cracks a little better it's still like fabulous to walk yeah. into tomorrowland and yeah. just see space mountain and see the the kind of the you know the sci-fi era from the classic days gone by sci-fi looking stuff it's just awesome <laughs> it just gives me an awesome feeling nice okay so what was your number one sir uh, my number one is actually my number one from my list. Um, okay, so this this is this one didn't even take any thought. This one immediately came to me, and um, I love more than anything, and I feel more good than anything watching the artistic efforts of people I know, and especially people I know and care about, become reality. Um, just off the top of my head, I'm going to say there was very, there, I mean, when I saw Kaj perform Young Frankenstein, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, when I saw, he didn't even have a main role, but he had a lot of good visible side, you know, parts in that. And just seeing him up there singing and dancing and, and acting and just doing that was just the, was one of the best feelings. Um, seeing you know seeing someone's play seeing someone's concert seeing someone's hearing someone's song that they just wrote mm -hmm. and you know they've been working on it forever um personal friends personal acquaintances seeing their creations become reality is the greatest feeling that i probably get outside of maybe seeing like things in my family work out for them or accomplishments in my family. And even that, like seeing my daughter play trumpet in honor band, you mm -hmm. know, when she, when she got picked to honor band and played on the Artemis ham hall stage, which I've seen concerts at and which I played on myself. Um, yeah. That's just a thrill that I can't articulate enough. You know, it's amazing. Well, that is a show guys. Sorry to cut it off. But to got to, um, you know, and, and, and I hope that this helped to bring some positivity to some people. And um, yeah, if nothing else, we, we hope we can be your escape once a week. Uh, we will be back next week with, unless something changes, we'll have our, our whole normal staff up this week. Yeah. Next week. So yay. Are we staff yay. now? Is that what we are? We're staff? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. Crew, whatever. Crew. Crew, crew is okay. good. The Motley, we are a Motley crew. So until next week, I'm Dub. I'm Miss Geeky Page. I'm Dirt Claude. No, I'm <laughs> P PBN Jason. Keep on geeking on because we never get it right. Never. When we're not in person. <laughs> Keep on geeking on. Love y'all. We'll see you next week. Bye. You have been listening to the latest episode of the iHeart Geek Show. Make sure you visit our website at www.iheartgeekshow.com. Make sure to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And if you check us out on YouTube, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And keep on geeking on to all of you geek rock stars.